Now, I've been getting a lot of questions recently about the Lifetime ISA or the LISA as it's sometimes known. This is a savings account or an investment account where you put money aside for one of two reasons. Number one, for buying your first home. Number two, for your retirement. And if you do that, you put the money in, you get a bonus from the government, a 25% bonus, which is pretty good, right? So what people tend to be confused about, exactly how they work, so I'll explain that. And they also say want to know whether they're a good idea. So I would explain when they might be worth considering, particularly when it comes to your first time house, how they compare to help to buy ISIS if you've already got one of those and some of the restrictions to consider if you haven't. And then we'll talk about retirement. I'll talk about how they compare to pensions, when they could be a good idea and when they could be a bad idea. So that's what you're going to get in this video. My name is Andy Webb, by the way, if you don't know me already, thank you so much for checking out this video. Please do hit that subscribe button, that little notification bell that pops up right next to it, because that means you don't miss any of the other videos that I release here on the channel on a regular basis, two or three a week most of the time. Okay, so the Lifetime ISA. You're probably already familiar with ISAs, right? And if not, this stands for Individual Savings Account. There are a few of these out there, a few different types you can get. And the big draw, the big reason why they exist is any extra income that you make on the money in there could be interest on savings it could be a return or a gain or a dividend on investments anything extra you make is tax free you won't get taxed on it now sometimes that's not so relevant right now with lots of other accounts out there and allowances that kind of I mean you don't really need it so the kind of the cash ice in particular that's not really so popular anymore you don't really need those stock to shares ices are great because they kind of protect your initial investment the Lifetime ISA is one of these accounts, right? So I like the others, you can put cash savings in them or you can put stocks and shares. You can invest in a Lifetime ISA. Now a Lifetime ISA has an annual allowance and this annual allowance runs the same as all ISAs from April the 6th to the April the 5th for the following year, so the financial year. In that year, you can put in a maximum of £4,000. £4,000 at most goes into that account. Now that, if you are also using other ISAs, that 4K comes out of your wider 20,000 pound allowance, okay? So it doesn't mean you can put 20K or mix that in other ISAs and 4K here. If you've already got 4K in a lifetime ISA, that means you've got a maximum of 16K for your other ISAs. That's important to know. You can though pay into a lifetime ISA and also pay into another stocks and shares ISA or another cash ISA or a combination of those. You can't pay into more than one lifetime ISA in that same financial year. So you can might have more than one. You might have been able to open one from previous years and have money sitting in them, but you can only pay money into a single lifetime ISA. Okay, so the same rules you get with normal ISAs carries over to the lifetime ISAs. Uh, it's also worth noting that if you do have ones from previous years, you can move them to a new account. You could open up one with a different provider if you wanted and transfer. And it's really important you don't withdraw the money and then pay it back in. Transfer that money over to your new lifetime ISA, which might pay a better rate of interest on savings or it might have lower fees on the investments. So that's the general broad rules with the lifetime ISA. Eligibility wise, who can get one? Well, this is very different to the other ISAs. A lifetime ISA is only open to people aged between 18 and 39. So if you have reached the grand old age of 40 years old, tough luck, you cannot open a lifetime ISA. You can, if you've already got, if you've opened it before you are uh, 40, keep paying into it until you are 50. So potentially that means if you did open one at 18 years old, well then you've got 32 years that you could be paying into this account. If you open one at 39, there's 11 years you can pay into it. Now let's say you can put in, in a financial year, £4,000 at most, at most. Now when you do that, when you put that money in, in that financial year, you get paid that bonus from the government, that 25% bonus, which is fantastic. It really is great, isn't it? They will just top it up and they do it on this on a, on a monthly basis. So let's say you put some money in uh, at the start of the month. By the end of the month, start of the next month, you will get that money. So you could potentially, let's say you do it at the end of a financial year. You put it in at the end of March, you put in 4K, you'll get that bonus. And then when it comes into April, you can put another 4K in potentially straight at the start of the year you could have 10K return within just you know a six week period, maybe something like that. So that's the thing to remember uh, that you can get this money. It's not paid on an annual basis, the bonus it's there. And that means once you get that return in, that in itself will start earning the interest or start being uh, getting the gains on the investments, however you want to put it in there. Uh, you do might have to select to reinvest it. So do check that in your, uh, if you've got it in the investment ISA, 
that you have to put it in and choose one rather than automatically go in. But that means you can start getting that extra on the extra as well. So free money on the free money, which is which is fantastic. So it kind of feels, doesn't it? As long as you're under the age of 40, that it makes sense to open up one of these accounts to get that free money, right? You don't get that anywhere else. Plus, if you invest in it, you'll get the return that you'll get from that, which could be pretty good as well. The cash ones don't offer such amazing rates, but I'll come back to that later on the cash versus investing side of things. But it's free money, right? Snap it up. Well, unfortunately not, because as I mentioned, there is a penalty to take that money out if you don't use it for one of two reasons. Number one, buying your first home. Number two, retirement. The only other reason you can get that money out of that account and not get charged extra for doing it, so you don't just lose the bonus that they pay in, you lose that obviously, but use a little bit of your initial uh, savings or investment as well. The only other reason to get that out without a penalty is if you have a terminal illness, okay? So you absolutely have to think very, very carefully before opening one of these up. Now let's start first of all with first time buyers. If you've never had a property before, then this could be a great way to boost your deposit, you know, help you get a little bit more to get onto the housing ladder, potentially might even help you move between those loan to value uh, tiers on the mortgage, get you a better deal. So what do you need to know about this? Yeah, just grab one if you want to buy a house. Well, well, potentially, but again, a few things you need to know. First of all, you can only use the money in there if you've had the account open for a year, for 12 months. So if you think you're going to buy in less than 12 months and you haven't already got a lifetime ISA, then any money you put in, well, to then access it, you've got to pay the penalty or keep it in there until you're 60. But if you are saving for longer or you don't even know when you're going to do that, you may as well open up one now. Even if you haven't got a lot of money to put in, you haven't got anything close to £4,000 to put in there. You could put just a quid. That's often all you need to open up one of these accounts. Put in a £1, at least that clock starts ticking towards that 12 months. And then you can obviously deposit money as and when. The other big thing with the uh, the first time buyer use is there is a cap on the value of the property you can use it against, and that's £450,000. Now, most of the UK, that's going to be fine, right? For your first property in particular. If you're in London and the southeast or other kind of expensive areas, uh, or maybe you just, you know, you've been a long time, but you've got a big cash influx or whatever it is, and you're able to buy something that costs more, then you can't use it again. If that happens, you pay the penalty to take the money out, or it stays until you turn 60. So they're really, really key things to think about. But as long as those things are okay and they're relevant, then absolutely, I would encourage you to, to think about getting one of these lifetime ISAs and putting your money in there to help boost it towards your deposit. Now, there could be some people who already have something called the Help to Buy ISA. Now, this closed in 2019 to new savers, okay? So you can't get, if you haven't got one of these, you can't get it, right? You're stuck with just a lifetime ISA. But very quickly, if you already have a Help to Buy ISA, uh, there is possible for you, if you want to, to transfer the money from the Help to Buy ISA into the Lifetime ISA. That gives you the increased allowance because obviously with a Help to Buy ISA, the most you could put in in a year was £2,400. Plus, that was about monthly limits as well you could put in. Whereas the Lifetime ISA, you can put that 4K in on day one if you want to. Uh, so that's worth knowing you can do that if you want to. And a big, big reason you might want to do that is again because around the UK, that limit on the uh, help to buy ISA was 250,000 pounds. It's 450 in London, but 250,000 uh, pounds outside London. So if your property you wanna buy is more than 250K, then you've got that increased 200,000 pounds allowance on a lifetime ISA. So that's definitely worth thinking about. The other key difference between those two accounts is when you can actually use the bonus, when you can use the money in there, because uh, with the help to buy ISA, you can only use that bonus on completion. Whereas the lifetime ISA, you can use it at exchange. Now this is, I won't go into detail in here too much, but essentially what that means is there's different amounts you have to commit a certain amount of the property value on exchange, uh, and then you pay the rest at, uh, with the full mortgage obviously on completion. And it could be if you've saved a decent amount of money in there, that that could make a big difference to you. So it's just worth knowing when you can actually access that bonus. Obviously a lifetime ISA gives you that a little bit extra if you wanna do that at that exchange period rather than the completion period. But the help to buy ISA does have its benefits as well because if you don't use it towards your first home, let's say it falls through or for whatever reason something else happens, well you can just take that cash out. Yes, you lose the bonus, but you can take that money back out and use it however you want. It's not stuck in there until you are 60. 
And also you don't have that restriction now. If let's say you've got your help to buy ISA and you wanna buy in the next 12 months and don't have a lifetime ISA, well, keep it in the help to buy ISA because that means you can use it as long as you reach, I think it's 1600 pounds saved in there, which you can get to within a few months, then you can use it. Whereas if you wanna move it to a lifetime ISA, then you've gotta start delays it for another, you know, at least a year before you can make that purchase. And very quickly, just talking about using the lifetime ISA for your first property. Uh, if you are buying with someone else, a partner or a friend or someone like that, and it's their first property as well, they can have their own lifetime ISA as well. And you can use both of those towards the property. And likewise, if your partner or the person you're buying with has previously owned, often that happens, you know, you're moving in with someone, you're buying together for the first time, but they already had one, you can still save for you. They can't obviously because they previously had a property, but you as an individual, you can still save into a lifetime ISA and use it towards the first home. So that I think is great. Just bear that stuff in mind. And if you do think it's not going to happen for whatever reason, you don't end up buying, you don't save up enough cash to do this, or the property is more than 450k, your money then goes towards that second reason. Or this might be your whole motivation for getting a lifetime ISA because you might already have a property, saving it for retirement. So let's talk about that then. Let's talk about a lifetime ISA and using that for your retirement, whether through choice or whether it's because you put the money in and you weren't able to access it earlier on. So how does this work? And most importantly, how does this differ to other pensions that you might have? Well, the key thing here is you can access it at 60 years old. A pension, in some cases, it obviously depends on what one you've got. Often you can access that at 55. So they might be sort of restricted a little bit later. However, if you really, really, really needed that cash, you can obviously take that money out, pay the penalty, which I will come back to. Whereas in a pension, you can't really, you don't want to take your money out of a pension early. It's, it's fraught with difficulties and it's not a good idea. So you wait a little bit longer to access the cash, but if there really was an emergency, you could get some of that money out or all the money out. So that's important to know. Uh, the other thing is that when you reach that sort of maturity, when you start wanting to use it, so to speak, at 60, all of it is tax free. So the initial deposits that you put in, the bonus that you received, any interest that you earned or any gains from the investments that were sort of put on top, accessing it, taking it out and then spending it, it is tax free completely, 100%. With a pension, only the first 25% is tax free if you want to take it as a lump sum. Obviously, there are different ways and different methods of using it. But if you do want to take any of it, only 25% is tax free. Also, with a lifetime ISA, if it's invested, it will carry on being invested while it's sitting there in that lifetime ISA. So potentially it continue to make some, hopefully some gains as it goes along. Obviously, if you've got a pension, you decide to get an annuity, then that all goes completely. It's no longer invested. It's just the cash that you have going in. Now, that's obviously, there's lots of different pros and cons about how you do that. And sometimes an annuity might be the best thing for you via a pension versus having money from a lifetime ISA. But that the kind of, they're the kind of the, the, the big differences between the two. But who should get one? So should you get one? Is that make it better than a pension or is a pension better? It really depends. Uh, and again, I'm not a financial advisor here, so you have to think about your own personal position here, your own personal things, and maybe look into this a little bit more uh, and maybe seek advice. But the big kind of the golden sort of rule here with this I lifetime ISA versus a pension is, are you employed by somebody else or are you self-employed? Now, if you are employed by someone else your employer will normally be giving you some matching some of your contributions and giving you some free cash that might be a couple of percent five percent ten percent who knows depends where you are and if you are putting the same amount in from your salary they'll hopefully match it to to that level that's free money you want to be getting that right you absolutely 100 percent want to be getting that free cash from your employer so that it makes it much much better than the uh, the uh, the lifetime isa now, when it comes to your tax, how much tax you're paying as well, and then this could well be, again, mainly it's about employers, but potentially if you are uh, self-employed, this, this could come into play as well, is how much do you earn? Because if you earn over 50K, that puts you into the higher tax rate bracket, right? So you earn more than 50,000 pounds a year, goes up uh, for 2021, 20, 2022, you're going to carry on after that to 50,000 pounds, 250,270 pounds, so a little bit more. But if you're earning above that, uh, you pay more tax on your earnings, but it also means you're entitled to some extra tax relief. And I'll quickly touch on what tax relief is, how that works on a pension. Again, it's, it's more complicated than I have time for in this video. But when you pay into a pension via your employer through your salary, right? Or 
actually your own one, your self-invested personal pension as well for a SIP. Let's say you put in, uh, you want to put £100 into uh, the pension. You will get tax relief on that of, if you're a basic rate taxpayer, 20%, which really means you're only putting in 80 quid of your own money. The 20% is basically coming via tax relief. So there's 100 quid in there, but you've only put in 80 quid. Let's go for the lifetime ISA. You put in 80 pounds, you get 25% bonus, which is 20 quid, puts you up to 100 pounds again. So they're exactly the same, right? So the tax relief on a uh, pension, uh, if you're a basic rate taxpayer and the lifetime ISA are exactly the same. If you are, as I said, one of these higher rate taxpayers and you're paying 40% tax, you can claim 40% tax relief, which means you put in £100 into your pension, you're only actually putting 60 quid in. So you're getting 40 quid of free money from the government. With a lifetime ISA, you'd still only get that 25% of free money from the government. So that two things there, make sure you are match. If you've got a choice between the two, if you're employed, make sure you are making the most of your employee employer contributions. They will give you extra if you match it as much as you can to so do that. And if you're a higher rate taxpayer, again, pension is much better for you because you are going to get more money back in tax relief. So that's if you're employed. If you're self-employed, well, you don't get the employer contributions. That doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, and obviously the tax relief thing still comes into play. But if you're just putting the money, what do I do? Put it into a SIP over here or do I put it into the lifetime ISA? It comes back to some of those things I spoke about before. Do you want that flexibility of being able to uh, get the cash completely tax free, uh, but wait till you're 60? But have that opportunity potentially if you needed to, if you really need to take that money out, even with a penalty. Or are you happy to put it in there? At earliest, you could get it is at 55, but you obviously could get it later on. Um, but have the other things that come with that. Because there are a few other differences between the two as well, which are, are important to know about. And you might be thinking, God, this is so far away that like, why do I need to think about it? But it's worth considering. With a lifetime ISA, if you are to die, it becomes part of the estate. So then it would obviously be subject to inheritance tax, things like that. If you have a lifetime ISA, it counts as savings. Any benefits you might want to uh, potentially or need to claim at some point, either while you're still younger or maybe when you're older. Again, that might go against you there. You might have to take the money out of the lifetime ISA before you are and use it until you're eligible for some of these benefits. Whereas with a pension, obviously, when you die, that can be uh, inherited. The money can be moved over to uh, somebody else. So it's important there to think about those things. It might be such a long way away right now, but they are some of the big differences between the two. So there you go. They're the two reasons why you might want to look at a lifetime ISA and exactly how they go, the pros and cons. There are obviously loads of articles out there you might want to read and just to check some of the other sort of minutiae detail that goes into it. But broadly, that's how the two things work. Now, as I promised you, I'll tell you about this penalty, right? Because if you don't use it for either of those reasons or you need it earlier, unless you have a terminal illness, you will pay a 25% penalty. Now, that might, to start off, sound like, well, the money, that's just the bonus. You get a 25% bonus, well, you pay a 25% penalty, you just end up with the same amount of money. But it doesn't quite work like that. Fractions don't work like that. So let's just, a simple example, 800 pounds, right? You put 800 pounds into a lifetime ISA, you get a 25% bonus, 25% a quarter of 800 is 200. 800 plus 200 is 1,000 pounds. So you have 1,000 pounds sitting in there. If you were to then withdraw that for any other reason than those that I've already discussed, you get hit by that 25% penalty. 25% of 1,000, so a quarter of 1,000 is 250, which means a balance of 750. So you put in 800 quid originally, you would take out 750, you would lose 50 quid. Which so that 50 quid is what roughly around six, seven percent, something like that. That's really the charge you're getting hit to that. You lose the bonus, you also lose some of your initial investment. So, really, really important that you are aware of that uh, if you think you might need access to the cash for any other reason. There was a, a freeze, a sort of diminished, a sort of just a 20 percent penalty to take the money out uh, during the pandemic for that whole year. Uh, which meant that you actually got your initial investment back. So you put in 800, get a bonus of 25% to a grand, take the money out, lose 20%, which is the same amount, come back out with the same amount. Uh, and that ran until uh, April the 5th of 2021. Uh, but that's already probably, if you're watching this now in late March, 
you might have a bit of time to do this if you want to, but the penalties are going to be back in place. I'm sure by the time most of you watch this, it's going to be too late for that. And finally, let's talk about whether you should be getting a cash lifetime ISA or a stocks and shares lifetime ISA. Now, you don't actually have a huge amount of choice here. There's no, there's, there aren't that many being provided by the different banks and investment firms and stuff. There's very few out there. In terms of the cash lifetime ISA, hardly any at all. Like minuscule amount of them. And they don't pay that much either. I mean, you're not getting a huge amount of best rates anyway. Now this can change and probably will change. The best cash paying one right now is from Moneybox paying 0.85%. Now after a year, that rate will drop. Um, but why would you, you know, if you think about this for retirement, you don't want the cash ones, right? Because it's talking about long term, you want to think about investment. The cash ones are really only, I guess, for buying your first home. Because if you are slightly worried about investing, maybe it's something quite new to you and you're not quite sure what to do with it. And you don't have the time to learn about it right now. And you want to buy within the next couple of years. You might just feel more comfortable having that money in cash, earning a little bit extra, but your primary focus might be getting that bonus uh, because the money you put in, the cash deposit you put in a cash lifetime ISA, that stays exactly where it is. That cannot drop in value. There is obviously the risk that if you put the money into a stocks and shares ISA, that that can drop down and you could have less money than you put in originally when you come to use it towards your home. To give you something in the short term in a couple of years doesn't mean you will you could actually make more who's to say depends really on your appetite for risk when it comes to getting your property getting that first home now longer term and that's what they always say about investing is thinking longer term at least five years if not much much further ahead if you're going to use that money towards retirement then you have got a long time even if you're getting it right at the limit at 39 years old, you still got 21 years before you can access that cash. So you have got a long term. So it really does make sense there to think about putting it in a stocks and shares lifetime ISA. Again, there aren't too many of these, but you can sort of research the different options uh, out there. And the thing to think about here really, uh, well, there's a couple of things. One, you want to think about how active you want to be with your investments. Uh, there are some which is called robo advisors, which basically you kind of sort of say, your rough appetite for investing and you kind of they will put it for you and deal with that for you and just let it go and you don't have to worry too much about it and generally those fees potentially could be lower as well because you're getting less involved or you can go to one of the sort of bigger platform places like aj bell or hargreaves lansdowne again do your research on this there's plenty of articles out there plenty of videos where people have done proper analysis of which ones are best the different charges and different fees that come into it uh, so look into those but that's essentially what i would say if you're thinking relatively short term so over a year because that's as soon as you could use it for your, your first home member as i said um, but within the next couple of years maybe consider cash anything longer than that you're probably best thinking about a stocks and shares isa so there you go a uh, lifetime isa in a nutshell quick summary you can open one between 18 and 39 years old you can keep paying into it until you reach 50 years old you can only access it to buy your first property which has to be under £450,000 and you have to have had the account open for at least 12 months before you can do it or you can keep it in there and access it when you turn 60 years old. If you want to get the money out for any other reason, unless it is a terminal illness, you have to pay a penalty which works out roughly not just losing that 25% deposit you've got but 6% on top. And finally, you can save it into either a cash lifetime ISA or a stocks and shares lifetime ISA. Now, I hope that you found this useful. If it has, if you've learned something and you think you're going to make some money or save some money as a result of this, please do hit that like button. Please do comment. Please do tell other people about it. Share this video with anyone you think might find it useful. My name is Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. And here are a couple more videos you might find interesting.